so let, let's start here because we know where we're going to really go. But were you surprised? I think when we left the air, was it was 1-0, right? Yes. Uh, Tampa Bay was up 1-0. Uh, Blake Snell was still pitching, and he was throwing fire. That's for sure. And uh, shortly thereafter, they took him out. Fifth inning, one out, and he gave up a single to the ninth batter. Was it fifth or sixth inning, Chris? I think it was the fifth Sixth. Inning, sixth inning. He went right. five and a third. Right, right. It's in, so he's it was pitching in the sixth. In the sixth. Did I say right, fifth? Right. Yes, yeah, sixth said, inning. Yeah. Sixth, sixth inning. inning. And they wasted no time. Manager Kevin Cash gives up. All it is is a single. It's a one-out single. And Cash goes and gets Snell, who Rob was throwing. He was throwing. I don't want to overstate it, but it was a classic performance. Nine strikeouts. How, how many hits had he given up? Like three hits, I think. Uh, on 73 pitches. So he, you would think he had a lot in the tank. I know this is a guy that never goes. He never goes six innings. That's a fact. That's not hyperbole. He's got the major league streak record for 21 straight starts. All of his starts this season without completing six innings. His ERA does skyrocket after five innings. So I'm sure that's what Cash was looking at, but here's some sound on. Well, let, let me. Most people know they took Snell out. They go to their relievers. Nick Anderson's the first one, and he gives and it the, up. Yeah, the Dodgers just pounce on him right away. Gives up a double, has a wild pitch, and next thing you know, they're down two one, and they lose three one. So, um. We're going to get into what we think of it, but here's Cash explaining the move. Kevin, I know you, you guys try to be consistent, but can you explain what went into the decision to take out Blake? What was your what was your motive there? No, I mean, the, the only motive was that um, the, the, the line, lineup the Dodgers feature is as potent as any team in the league. Personally, I felt Blake had done his job and then some. Mookie coming around for the third time through. I value that. I totally respect and understand the, the questions that come with it. Didn't want Mookie seeing Mookie or Seager seeing Blake uh, a third time. Do you regret that decision? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I regret it because it didn't work out. Uh, but, the, you know, I feel like the thought process was, was right. I mean, every decision that's made, that end result has a pretty, you know, weighing factor on how you feel about it. If, if we had to do it over again, I would have the utmost confidence in Nick Anderson to, to get through that inning. You want to go first? Yeah, let me just say right. this, Chris. I, I, I do I, – I think he made the wrong decision, and this is where analytics hurts baseball all the time because there's a gut and there's a feel and there's like our season is on the line. Who do we want in the game, Chris? Do we want our ace? Or do we want a guy who had given up runs? And, and, and I guess Anderson at one point, Chris, was unhittable during the regular season, okay? But during in the, the playoffs, season, right. he had given up runs in each of his last six appearances. Let's make it seven when he came in. Right. So, he, so despite the numbers, he hadn't been pitching that great. Okay, so if you're going to tell me that you're going by the numbers, then the numbers would have said that Anderson has not and OT been pitching well. And I get it. When you roll up the stat sheet and, and, and your computer spews out that uh, Blake Snell's ERA the third time around, Chris, is a 4.97. And, and Third time and, seeing uh, the lineup, yep. Yeah, you know, the third time around, third time, yep. I, I get it. Okay, and he's normally 2.26 the first time, so that's a big jump the third time that you come up. And I know why he went out and got him. Because he gave up a hit to the ninth place hitter. Oh, my God, he, he's losing it. Because here comes the ninth place hitter. And in his history, you just mentioned it. He has the longest streak of not going more than six innings, right? He, he, 21. Right. Not completing six innings. Right. So, 21, yeah. the longest streak in the major leagues. Okay? So all those overriding factors, I get, Chris, why the move was made. But I don't like it. And I think everybody who was watching, and you know this, Chris, they first guessed it. It wasn't after they gave right. up the hit. 
Right. You know what I mean? Or gave up the two runs. It was like, no, don't take Snell out. He's your ace. He's dealing. And even if he would have given up, okay, he gives up the hit. And then if Mookie hit a home run the third time around, people would go, oh, see, Kevin Cash, the numbers say. But in this case, I'm sorry. My gut would have told me to leave my ace in. Rob, I agree with you. And you and I have been beating this drum, not just with baseball, but with basketball as well. Yes. This is analytics gone wild. That's all this is. And I want to say something to baseball. We, we talked about it, Rob, in 2018. When the Dodgers were taking out three of their top home run hitters in Boston. against lefties. And, and it didn't make any sense to us. You couldn't imagine teams in the 80s and 90s doing that. All right? And they did it, and they lost. Boston, on the other hand, certainly big on the analytics, but also played small ball, had a good mix. I'm not saying, I'll never say analytics doesn't have a part in but, sports. But, 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 Chris, even when you talk about the Red Sox, they had the second highest payroll. So when people bring up the Red Sox as the analytics, they had but, star players. Right. And, and my thing is, but it, but they also went somewhat by feel, too. It wasn't completely analytics like Tampa Bay does. Like the I think the Yankees do. And and so they they were a mix. And then this year the Dodgers learned from their past mistakes. They didn't take out their lefties against left-handed pitching. They just you know changed the lineup a little bit, alternated batters and stuff. And they win. And I'm not saying it's that black and white, but still analytics is not the end all. Analytics does not, it ignores, not only does it not take into consideration, it ignores things like guts, moxie, who can handle pressure and who can't, who rises to the occasion and who wets the bed. Analytics takes into account none of that. Blake, who's to say Blake Snell wasn't throwing the game of his life? Who's to say those numbers would have held up? He's obviously one of the better pitchers in the league. Who's to say he couldn't have had one of those magical days? How many magical moments would we not have, Rob, historically? If we always went by the numbers, oh, he's expected to do this. And you brought up a good point. Nick Anderson, if we're going by the numbers, his last 10 innings in the playoffs, Rob, he had given up 14 hits, four walks, and eight earned runs. So how was he getting in the game? Right. That, that, if you you're take going out a by guy numbers. who's absolutely dealing for Nick Anderson, who was struggling mightily on the postseason? Exactly. If you if you had me, Chris, if you had a guy who had not given up a run in the postseason, you know what I mean, who had been lights right. out, maybe I can buy it. But you put in a struggling guy, struggling, <laughs> who had been struggling in the postseason. It Absolutely. doesn't make sense. Absolutely. Struggling. And here's the other thing, Rob, and I got a few other things, but notice in that quote from Cash, I didn't want Mookie to see him and Seeger to see him a third time. Where's the confidence? Where's the belief in your play? That's what analytics does. It takes away your confidence in your guys. If you look in the Snell's eyes, you know what's in his heart. You got no confidence at all? I get it. Mookie's great. Seager's great. Right. But do you want to hear a coach say that? What if we heard Rob G, you know, say something like, you know, Chris and Rob are great, but if they had to do a fourth hour, it would be a mess. They're just not capable. Who are I mean, you talking that's to what Jason you're saying. Smith? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's what he's saying about <laughs> Snell, and I don't like it. And I'm I'm gonna say this finally, Rob. I am I'm obviously I picked the Dodgers to win it. So yeah, we always want our picks to be right. So I'm happy about that. Happy for Kershaw, Mookie, all Dave yes. Roberts, you know all those guys. But I am also glad that Tampa Bay did not win and that this move backfired because had it worked, <laughs> this is a little overstatement, no, but bear I, with I, me. I, we I may have never saying. seen a guy go five innings again. Yep. 
I mean, yep. you because they do they're they're ahead of this, right? This bullpen pitching and you know all that stuff, openers and all that. I mean, it it may be going that way anyway. Hopefully, no, this but would you deter know it. You know what I'm saying? I Two think innings the, for I, the starter, one and then one inning for each guy the rest of the way. It or blew something up like in that. the Yankees' face in the playoffs, Chris, by trying to do that same monkey business, right? You remember that? Right. In right. Game two, they did it yep. against Tampa, and it blew up in their face. And I think that people are going to look at this, and, and Chris, where, where's the proof that the analytics mean you're going to win? I, I just, the Oakland A's are the, opposite, are the right? poster boys, right, yep. of yep. analytics. They've never won anything. Billy Bean just called it quits in Oakland without winning anything. Tampa Bay's been to the World Series twice now. Nothing to show for it. Where's, where's the evidence? I don't see the evidence. When, when, when Washington won, won last year, they, they had good players. Dependent. Yep. Right? Yep. 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 I agree. You know, and there's a, a school of thought out there that has some evidence behind it that analytics is fine for the 162, the regular season. Yep. But it doesn't pay off in the playoffs. And that's my point. Because in the playoffs, Rob, we know it's about, you know, who can rise to the occasion and who lets the pressure get to him? That's why there's if it some wasn't people call him Mr. October, right? right? Right. You don't get that name. That what they didn't call him Mr. April or May or June. Mr. Absolutely. October. Absolutely. And there have been guys historically who maybe aren't, you know, all Hall of Fame players, but in the playoffs they've been great. So you just can't. I I just get sick of it. It's just ridiculous. And I think, look. I, you got to put some blame on Tampa Bay's offense, obviously. I'm not with those that say, had Snell not come out, no, I'm they with you, win Chris. the game. I don't know. They'll score one run, right? You can't score right. one run. Remember, the Dodgers used their bullpen. It was a bullpen game, yep. Yep. and you got one run in the first inning on a solo home run and nothing off the bullpen when six guys pitched? That's unacceptable. I'm with you. Yep. They, they yep. can't be off the hook. Uh, you needed more than one run last night to win that game. Absolutely.